and good morning. And welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. Yeah, my, my hair's not looking very good, I know. But I'm in seminary. Who do I have to impress? Um, anyway, it is Friday, January 8th, Friday of the Epiphany. As we don't know, the Epiphany uh, lasts for more than just a day. But um, it is Friday, January January 8th, the feast day of St. Thorfinn, um, and not much is known about him. Evidently, he was an ordinary Norwegian bishop um, of the 13th century, and that's really all I know about him. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with being ordinary while still doing great things. Maybe that's the challenge for today already, and you can just stop the video now. Just kidding. Well, do what you want. But today's gospel is from Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. Let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now there was a man full of, full of leprosy in one of the towns where he was. And when he saw Jesus, he fell prostrate, pleaded with him, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do, I do will it, be made clean and the leprosy left him immediately. Then he ordered him not to tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The report about him spread all the more, and great crowds assembled to listen to him and to be cured of their ailments. But he would withdraw to, des to deserted places to pray. All right, so we've got the cleansing of a leper, and... Um, such a short but awesome testament of faith by this guy. Because, you know, if you go back and put this in even further context, leprosy was like you were isolated if you had leprosy. Like no one would ever go around you. Um, they thought that even if you stood within that six-foot social distancing, you would catch leprosy. They didn't have that, by the way. But um, it pretty much, you were left to be a hermit. Um, if you had leprosy back in that back in those days, and because there was no cure for it, but notice the amount of faith and trust that this man had in Jesus, because you know he first of all he fell prostrate, he fell to his knees, and he pleaded with them, he begged them, you know, which showed his reliance on Jesus, like what we should, like what we should do, um, and then he's but this is this is key, he says, Lord, if you wish. You can make me clean. If you wish is the key point there, um, which again demonstrates the faith, and which presents itself as a win-win situation. Like he went to be cured, yes, um, and that would certainly be a win for this man who's going through this personal struggle with his physical um, sickness right now. Um, but it's also a win that he says. If you wish, which demonstrates the amount of faith that he had, that if, like, that left it open to truly be God's choice. You know, it's truly Jesus' choice if he's going to heal him. And if he doesn't, this man's okay with that. He knows that it's to better serve the Lord. Because it's better, you know, I don't know how many times we hear in seminary, it's better to suffer on earth than what it would be to suffer for eternity. And um, how true can that be? And that's demonstrated within this verse. And then, of course, Jesus, recognizing that this man's faith is truly devout, he willed it, and he made him clean. Um, so I think that's a challenge in ourselves, too, that we need to have the, the amount of faith and trust in God and that he can do whatever he wills if we have a deeper faith. You know, because a lot of us doubt. And that's part of our human nature. That's natural. Um, where we, we pray, we pray, we pray, we beg, we beg, we beg, we say, why this, why that? But um, even after we pray, we still doubt him at times. I know I do, and that's something that I need to continue working on, and I will continue to work on, um, as we all do. Um, but, you know, as that happened, as he healed him, word spread, and uh, the crowds kept coming and coming and coming. And then what happened after Jesus got towards the end of this gospel? He says, all the crowds assembled, but he would withdraw to deserted places to pray. 
meaning amongst all the good that Jesus did, all the healings, all the preaching, all the everything, he never let that break away from his main priority, which was his relationship with God and his prayer. And that's why he left so many times in scripture to the mountain to pray or deserted places to pray, as what is said here. So out of all that, I'm sure we can get a, uh, we can get a challenge um, because uh, you know, there's a lot, a lot of it's based on our interior life because as this leper is worried about his exterior, you can tell that his interior life is most important in his spiritual life. So like the leper, you know, are we truly open and accepting of God's will in our life, even if it doesn't, even if it isn't necessarily what we want. And even if it is something that we want, that he's just not granting it. Or it's something that we do want, but God's not granting it because he's got bigger and better plans for us. Um, so that's the challenge for me and for you and for everybody. And um, as St. Augustine said, um, our heart is restless until it rests in you. Um, so we, we need to make sure that we get, uh, get in that good resting place with the Lord. So spend some, spend some time with him today. God bless. Keep it real. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen.